Tom here from Lauren Systems, and probably the most popular question I get is anytime I've done a diagram is what diagram software are you using to draw that, or what's the best or best free diagram software out there? And the answer is all the same. For the last, well, maybe year and a half or longer, I have been using diagrams.net. And it's pretty outstanding. I don't remember who turned me on to it, but it's a great product. I have a more in-depth tutorial than what I'm going to show you today that I'll leave linked to below to get you started with it. But it works as a web page that you don't need to sign up for. You can use it all inside the browser, or you can tie it to your G Suite account and collaborate in real time, or you can tie it to your next cloud and do real-time collaboration and all kinds of file storage on there. You can also integrate it with Office 365 or Atlassian. And if none of those things make you happy, you can also download it as a desktop application for Windows, Linux, or Mac, still free. And if you really feel advanced and you just want to wall it off and self-host it, well, they got an option for that too in Docker. So there's a, a lot of different ways you can play around with diagrams.net. Hands down, highly recommend it. What I'm here to talk about today is since I did that tutorial, well, about a year and a half ago, there's a lot more features that have been added. And I want to talk about a couple of the highlights and where you can read more about it. And we're going to start right at their blog. Their blog is a great resource because there's just so many features that they are constantly rolling out that, well, I don't always use or have a need for, but maybe you do. Features, integrations, use cases, news, other open source, new templates being added. They're all nice and categorized here for you to scroll through. I, it's a great resource if you're just curious what else it can do, maybe beyond some of the use cases you may have or that I've had and showcased on this channel. The first exciting option to add that I really like, but it's simple and a little bit hidden is flow animations. I see a little bit hidden because when you create a connector between two shapes, the styling is all over here, but there's an extended property you have to get to to see the flow animation, but you just check it. The flow animation goes from the shape it started at to the shape it was destined to. There's not a way to reverse that flow. There's not a control on speed of the flow. It just animates exactly like you see here. You just turn it on or off. But turning it on or off doesn't change any of the other styling options for the particular shape. So you can still color it, theme it, modify it otherwise. But yeah, it gives it a cool little flow animation. The next big change is more shapes. This is sometimes a good and bad thing because it creates some indecision for so many shapes to choose from. But it's great having these. So if I wanted to build out something with Active Directory or maybe Android or Atlassian or Bootstrap. We have a lot of different types of icons I can use in here. They even have rack icons. So you could use this to build out your rack designs in your network and start putting them in there. And it's great having all of this on here. And we'll hit apply. Now we have this mess over here. But don't worry. This is a mess, but an easy one to solve because they have a search right here to make it quick to find anything that you added there. So we're going to hit rack, more results. We can type uh, Azure and get some of the Azure icons and then start dragging them over. So there's a Windows icon for there. There's the Bitbucket. And uh, what else we got? Azure. Okay. Now you start dragging these and going, these are the shapes I want to use to start building out my graph. What do I do with all of that? This is where things are also clever with the scratch pad. We can drag these back onto the scratch pad and that does include things that are already filled out. So this says firewall with an IP address attached to it. If we drag it to the scratch pad here, we create a new page and we drag that same firewall over here. The scratch pad remembers anything you drove over there to be able to reproduce it. It goes a step further. You can, edit this scratch pad, you can import images and import full other draw.io files. And we've actually imported two in here. If you mouse over them, I have this one here and I have this one here. I can actually take this file and it's a complete draw.io. Matter of fact, this is one file I opened and it imports both pages as separate pieces of the scratch pad. So I can start with and leave those in the draw.io. Really makes it easy when you're wanting to duplicate a lot of things, start getting it started. Maybe you have a template you want that you want to start as a base. You can add it to your scratch pad. Or when, as I said, you're doing any one particular job, you just drag the ones you want in there and then just edit the scratch pad if you don't want them in there and say, I probably don't need those and I probably don't want that one in there because the scratch pad does persist even when you start a new document. Now, the next major change is themes. We're going to go in here to extras. We have the default theme. We have a minimal theme, Atlas, and dark. Dark mode is a complete theme change. So we're going to switch it to dark. Now this does require closing and relaunching the application and we'll do the sketch theme last. So we're going to go ahead and close it. And now we've launched this with a dark theme. The problem is this is not 100% compatible with certain things such as when you go new 
and create new diagrams, some diagrams may not look very good with the dark theme. It, it requires a little bit of styling on there. And of course, any existing ones you did, if you did custom coloring and that coloring doesn't high contrast across there, it may not work for well, but hey, that's just time to retheme and redo those particular documents. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about, and it's kind of a theme or different mode, I would say, is sketch mode. And sketch mode still takes a restart to switch to this mode, but sketch mode lets us switch between dark and light themes. So here's sketch mode on a light theme, and we can say, you know, in sketch mode, and drag different icons over. And you can see it lets us sketch things out in a pretty simple, kind of fun way. Now, what makes this pretty cool is because the dark mode, it's dark mode aware. So this is going to switch to dark mode. And look, it switched the theme of this as well. So I didn't have to make any special color changes provided I used all the icon sets that are compatible with Sketch, which is quite a few of them, but some of the icons may not show up quite as well. And so when you're going through the shapes, you may run into some issues if it wasn't a Sketch mode and you were trying to add text to it, but pretty neat that it does this. Now let's go a step further with Sketch mode and it makes it easy to theme the entire Sketch. So we're gonna go here to Style, and uh, you can change the different themes they have in here to some really weird and hideous themed colors. Some are nice, maybe some are not nice and some are harder to read, but I like the way this makes it very simple to do. And if you create something in sketch mode and set these themes, like the, something as ugly as this, we'll choose this one here, that's hard to read. And we're gonna go ahead and save it. Switch back to the default theme, and it's still editable in this version as well. And you can go back and change the formatting again and the style and everything. So you can still, you know, it's still as ugly as it was before. You can still switch it. So anything created in sketch mode still works. But now when we drag things into normal mode, everything's back in normal mode. So you can go back and forth between these, and it's pretty fluid. I like the way I can do something in sketch mode to get an idea, maybe redraw it out here, but hey, it, it allows quite an element of fun when we're doing these and setting this up. Now, maybe in the future, I'll do another more in-depth video. There's just so many features to cover inside of Draw.io. It's got all kinds of ways you can import text, build things based on imported text in different languages. It even has a way to import tables out of SQL to understand them so you can start drawing relationships between different tables in the database. There's an extensive amount of features available, more than I'm covering in this particular video. I encourage you to go through their blog to kind of see some of the cool features and maybe some things you want to use in there. And of course, I'll leave a link to my more in-depth tutorial where I dive a little deeper into getting started with it and some of the basics to get you going and start using it. It's free. It's easy to use. I'll leave a link to their website, link to their blog, and a link to my other video. And thank you. See you in the forums. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.